Open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 2. I like to take the Bible and see what it says and then how it relates to us today and not make it like it's some kind of a book that's dead and dry and it, it really pertains to what we are going through today. And so today we're going to talk about some things uh, I've never talked about before, but we're going to talk about the Antichrist spirit that's in the world today. And again, this is another warning for some books that are happening in our schools that are coming to the parents and the grandparents, things to watch out for, and not to be afraid, but be prepared. And that's the thing. We are not to give in to the spirit of fear. There's so much fear and there's so much, there's websites that just promote this thing's gonna hit the planet and this is gonna, I don't even watch that stuff. It just promotes fear and unnecessary stress. Uh, stick to truth and facts, not just theories that are out there. There's so much that you can just get so fearful about. Live every day and enjoy your day. Enjoy your children, enjoy your grandchildren, enjoy what you can. And the news is bad. We know that the news is bad. It seems like every day there's something else. But when we're strong in the Lord, and if you're not, you need to become a Christian today. This isn't a day to play half in and half out. And it's hard. It's really hard because people can't find churches anymore. That's what I hear weekly. We can't find a church that just preaches the Bible. They want to bring us and rope us into the new age and to... Uh, the Word of Faith or the NAR and all these apostles and prophets. But that's part of our warfare. That's part of what we're wrestling against. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And the world is getting darker, but our faith, we have to keep it strong and become a believer in the Lord and read his Bible and his truth and faith just comes. Faith comes by hearing. So here in 1 John 2, we're going to read about this, but then we're going to also apply it to what's, what's happening. What's happening, some of you may not know this. Uh, <clears throat> years ago when I had to raise children and I was doing all this and I was pastoring at that point, a big church, I didn't have the time to research like I do now. In 2016, I would say was the turning point for me is that I started uh, coming out of these movements and the more I researched I cried, I grieved, I was sad. I found Bibles I was preaching out of that I would no longer preach out of today, the message and all those other ones. I wouldn't even touch it now. But back then I didn't know because I didn't research and I didn't even hear anybody say go research. But you need to research everything you're hearing and know that there are people that are trying to tell the truth. Even though we make mistakes along the way, uh, all of us are on a journey. We're trying to find truth, right? And we're trying to find fellowship with people that agree on the same page. So 1 John 2, in verse 15, it says, Love not the world. This talks about the world system. The very way the world operates is not the way we are to operate as Christians. Even though, unfortunately, some of these teachings were brought into the church, that it's all about how you prosper and about your dream and all this stuff that was brought in under the name of Christianity. And a lot of it we've talked about before was Gnosticism or it was uh, really programming for what's happening now, pre preparing people for the new age. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, he's talking about now the things that we're not supposed to love. The lust of the flesh. Your flesh always wants more, 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 right? The grass is always greener over there. The, your, your flesh always wants more. And what does the Bible say? Be content. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Be satisfied. Be blessed with what you have. Not trying to compare yourself with someone else. But that happened so much back in the church days. It, yeah. it, it all depended upon your purse, you know. What kind of purse would you carry, you know? <laughs> the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Yeah. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The basics, if, if you know the Lord, you should have love. They shall know that you're a Christian by your love. 
basic people, I wonder, are they even saved? I don't see any love. I don't see, you know, you agree with them or it's a highway. That's the basics of being saved. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. And this is what I want to talk about. The Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists. So we know that they're preparing for a Antichrist, but that spirit has been around since this Bible has written in before. And today, tonight, or this morning, wherever you're listening to me, we want to talk about an Antichrist spirit that's definitely in the world. These Antichrist spirits are rising. And it says, many Antichrists, whereby you know that it is the last time. In verse 22, you can read all that, we don't have time, but who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. So this Antichrist spirit opposes Christ. It is an opponent of Christ coming against Christ. And so we want to talk about one of them today. And I also want to recommend that you uh, sign up for Roberta 2, Roberta Morrison 2 on YouTube. That's our backup channel. Not very many people are on that. We haven't really announced that, I think, just once. But in case I get a strike on these, uh, hopefully I won't on this one, but I have to prepare you for what's coming. That's what I feel this is the most important thing we can do in our life right now is to get the truth out to people. Get the truth out to people, the false doctrines. Many people are coming out of them. They don't know what to believe. We've taught a lot on false doctrine in the past. You can look at a lot of our old YouTubes. But this is the most important thing, getting the word out. And thank you for those that are helping us. We can't do it without you. We're a team doing this to get truth out. And that, to me, is preaching the gospel around the world, what we're doing right now. So thank you for helping us. But here now, it, I want to talk about, um, we've been talking about witchcraft and how witchcraft has been, it's been rising. And it's, it's always been there. Deuteronomy 18 talks about witchcraft and all this stuff. But we are in this spell casting, people don't even realize how the enemy wants to control our minds. Manipulation or psyops, uh, psychological operations are modern day witchcraft to bend someone to your will, to control people, to impress their will onto you to do what the spell caster wants. And that's called programming. Tell, lie, vision. Television. So witchcraft is bending someone to your will. And this is what they want to do with our children. And children have always been a target. And boy, I tell you what, it's, it's better not to come against the children because you're going to have to face the Lord and all this stuff, all this stuff. But woe unto those that come after our kids, right? right. Now this guy, Yuval Noah Harari, we're going to talk about him for a minute. Okay, uh, Harari, he's a new world prophet. He's what they would call a young world leader. He's the World Economic Forum young global leader. He's an advisor to Klaus Schwab. And a lot of you know about him now. This has been uh, the Davos meetings. All these things are going on. But he has written a book. It's called Volume 1, so you know there's more volumes coming out. Unstoppable Us. And a quote from, from him, and I'm going to say a few quotes from him so you know, this is, and this should be taught in every church, this should be what people are seeing is happening, that we're not living in this bubble of you can have what you say and you're just blessed and all that. What's really going on in our world? What's really going on in our educational systems? What's really going on behind the scenes? And what are the agendas for 2030 and 2040 and 2050? The quote here, fake news, this is what he says fake news is. Now we're talking about antichrist spirits that are denying the Lord, right? Fake news, he said, has been with us for thousands of years. Just think of the Bible. All these stories, Jesus rising from the dead, being the son of God. This is fake news. He also says, humans are now hackable animals. That humans have a soul and free will, that's over. So what are they planning on doing to take away people's free will? Now remember we were talking about witchcraft the last couple of weeks and how 
They want to bend your will. God's given us freedom of will, freedom of choice. The devil wants to take away free will. This is the battle. And this is what we, like it or not, we're in a battle for truth. And now it's inverted. The enemy wants to invert everything that God made, everything that God says, he wants to invert it. These are the anti-Christ. These are the Christ deniers. So he says, humans are now hackable animals, calling us animals, that humans have a soul and free will. That's over. The next phase is surveillance going under our skin. Collect data. Now, why do they want to get under your skin? Because they want to know everything about you. They want to be inside of you. Remember years ago I said, be careful what you put in your body because they want your temple. This is a temple of the Holy Spirit and the enemy wants the temple, right? So he's written a book for preteens and I want to put a, this is an educational lesson. He's written a book for preteens. So how did we become unstoppable? And this is what he's doing. He's training the readers to think about this. Now this is going to go worldwide, this book. Not just America, but this is going worldwide to train readers to follow after the beast and sway children away from God and his upo- utopian vision for humanity. And he wants to talk about how man evolves. Not was created by God, but how he evolves. It uncovers secrets and superpowers of how we evolved. That's what these books are. Now, if you can get kids at a young age to believe in reincarnation, and you can get kids to believe, he he says you came from uh, monkeys, Uh, kids will start believing what you tell them at that young age. So parents, you have to be alert to know what is going on. What are your kids reading? Grandparents, you know, the time that you spend, it's important that you make an impression on these kids with the time that you have with them because they're getting taught absolutely the opposite mostly in these schools. Uh, This book is headed to schools all over the world. Now in Colossians 2, 2, 8, it says, Beware lest anyone spoil you through philosophies, vain deceits, after the tradition of men and the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. So I looked up, what's that rudiment of the world? The rudiments of the world. Remember, we're not to love the world? Well, the rudiments of the world are rules of arts and science. How much have we heard just follow the science, follow the science, follow the science? 1 Timothy 6, 20 through 22 says, Avoid profane and vague babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. So there's a true science and there's a fake science. There's a science that tells you what you're supposed to do because they say so. Wait till I get into some more of this, you'll understand. So this book, it's rolling out to become history material in school systems worldwide. The New York Times has it as the best children's books of 2022. Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Barack Obama promote him. He serves as Schwab's top advisor, global education. <clears throat> he says we can decide what the world, he says we can decide what the world will become. In chapter one, we were just ordinary animals that ate worms who climbed trees and ate bugs. When kids are scared, There are monsters under their bed. It's because it's a memory, cellular memory, when monsters did sneak up on children. This is from his writing. It goes into what marriage is today. Let's just say it's not a man and a woman. In fact, he is is married to a man. Now his book on sapiens, he explains why false narratives, listen to this, why false narratives are so important to transform humanity into a new species of homo, even into gods. Think about that. It's okay to deceive people, is what he's saying. It's okay to deceive people because it's important to transform and push people along to shape them into the image that we want them to go into. So this is about his book. He's written a few books, and it's about transhumanism. 
Now, a lot of these merchants of the earth are transhumanism, are transhumanists who believe that uh, AI is going to overtake humanity and they want to make man uh, artificial, enhance them any way, add to their brain, add to all these things. And they say, they call it circular, circular, circularity or something like that. But they, I used to think when I started reading this, oh, that's, you know, way off. Well, now they're saying 2030, they believe that this will happen. That's only seven years. So we pray that it doesn't happen <laughs> and that more people are awake to it and they see these books for what they are. Um, and then he talks about, I want to say this again, he explains why false narratives are so important to transhumanity into a new species of homo, even into gods. It's about transhumanism and how narratives are used to control society. What's a narrative? It's an ordered series of events. So if they control the narrative, and if, and if they say anyone that comes against their narratives, it's false information. So their false information they say it's true information, yeah. but they're coming against real truth, saying it's misinformation. Does that make sense? S Satan is the father of lies. Right. And so all this is about deceiving people. And remember Matthew 24, what does he say in these end times? Deception, deception, deception. We don't have to be afraid of it. We can be empowered if we know what's happening. Yeah. We can see through it. Yeah. We know what's happening. We're not like some of these Christians that don't want to hear anything negative, I can't hear anything negative. They're the ones that are going to be deceived and fall in the ditch. But it's the ones that have their eyes open and their ears open. They know what's going on. They know what to avoid. They know the ditches. And that's what God wants us to do. He's given us his Holy Spirit yes. to keep us on the straight and narrow road. So he's saying our grandmothers, I'm still talking about him, he's saying our grandmas are chimpanzees from monkeys. He said there were six species of man and he's married... Yeah, and he said, he's talking about how do you reproduce, you reproduce in laboratories. Now, we used to laugh at that. We used to think, oh, yeah, right. Well, it's becoming more and more real that they're bringing this out into the open. So, propaganda or brainwashing works to get people to do what you want them to do to evolve. Lies can be used to control the world. They say this. How? Could you even follow somebody that's, you know they're lying to bring in a narrative because they want to shape humanity? Devo uh, deception is the key to survival, according to this guy. Deception is the key to survival wow. for the greater good. Uh, now his second book, I'm not even going to advertise it, it's a new species of humans with no rights, uh, Basically, it's the God-man. The second book, it goes into the God-man. And he talks of castration. Why do we talk about castration? Because they talk about it. And it's turning humans into farm animals. In his books, humans also castrated their own young males to create soprano singers yep. with enchanting voices and eunuchs. This is history, people. They've always done it. Uh, the great singers they put in the operas, and then the bad ones they put in churches. <laughs> That's what I heard. Today we can castrate a man, but also change his sex through surgical and hormonal treatments. This is not new. It's new to Christians that have their heads in the sand. Uh, you guys doing all right? <laughs> I know this is not exciting, but when you have eyes to see what's coming, and you see it, you go, thank you, Lord, for warning me. I can tell my kids, I can tell my grandkids, I can warn my, my, my children. Uh, now, 10 years ago, this guy was talking about genetic engineering to change genders. Well, we're here now. He was talking about it 10 years ago. People will no longer be male or female, he said. Now, this reminds me, and we've been talking about the androgynous agenda, but this reminds me of a song. When I was in high school, in my dad's Jeep, we'd turn on that radio. Remember we used to listen to the radio back in the day? And they played this song, In the year 25, 25, if man is still alive. Remember that song? Well, it, this reminds me of this song. It's like, are they following a script or something? Mm -hmm. Ain't gonna need no husband, won't need no wife. 
You'll pick your son, you pick your daughters too from the bottom of a long glass tube. Your arms are hanging limp at your side. Your legs got nothing to do. Some machine is doing that for you. Everything you think, this is still that song, everything you think, do and say is in the pill you took today. Now remember that word pill because we're going to come back to that. They actually say to be transhumanism to, into this whole thing that you can take a pill. That you can start, they can start changing you and monitoring from the inside. Now transhumanism, and I'm not going to get into this, but this is a huge subject in the, the meetings and the conventions they're having. And the, I looked up some online. It's amazing how big this thing is. Transhumanism, they are saying we don't need God. Just technology. The goal is intelligence and get this, eternal life. They think they can make heaven and hell. The goal is intelligence and eternal life. And they're calling it a religion for the postmodern times. We've always wondered what's going to be the new world religion. Technology and science used to improve humans in the future can raise our IQ with smart drugs. Here we go with the pills. Smart drugs or even gene therapy. Merging human life with technology. Singularity or the AI, artificial intelligence, singularity, they believe will happen in the next seven years. That's when AI transcends humans. Intelligence. Wow, with all the other things they're throwing at us. <laughs> And you wonder why we get these distractions. There's a balloon in the sky doing this and that, all this crazy stuff. Because of the stuff they're really doing yeah. and having these meetings to implement different things and different agendas, uh, this, is a big, this is big on their plans. Uh, and I'm just going to close with a couple of the facts here. This is written by f uh, in February of last year. Human beings are hackable animals. Mm -hmm. Free will is over. This is an uh, article. The merchants of the earth or the globalists want to re-engineer the future of life itself. A new regime of surveillance that is under the skin to collect biometric data. Now, Swab and his organization is attempting to change human beings. He says in the Industrial Revolution will not change what you're doing. It will change you. Let that sink in. It wants to change you. It's who you, it's you who are changed. And this guy, he said, it's you who are changed. They quote him, this Harari guy, explaining that in the past, many tyrants and governments wanted to hack millions of people, but nobody understood biology well enough, Harari says at the start of this video. And nobody had enough computing power and data to hack millions of people. Neither Gestapo nor the KGB could do it. Look at, think of the, the way they're putting it into this context. But soon at least some corporations and governments will be able to systematically hack all the people, he goes on to say, adding, we humans should get used to the idea that we are no longer mysterious souls. We are now hackable animals. And he says, this merger of human life with technology will... will not benefit the average man or woman so that he or she may improve her own future, but a handful of elites will not only build digital dictatorships for themselves, but gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. It's all about them. Yeah. It's really not about you and you getting smarter. <laughs> Re-engineering humanity. And he says... Uh, Harari says the cloud technology such as IBM or Microsoft's platform will be the one of the driving forces everything's in the cloud of this evolution. He also said, humans are now hackable animals. The whole idea that humans have the soul, the spirit, and they have a free will. Nobody knows what's happening inside of me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or in whether in the supermarket, this is my free will. Again, he said, that's over. Free will, that's over. He emphasizes. So don't fall for this stuff. Do not consent. <laughs> Do not consent when all this stuff that's going to make you better and blah, 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 and take this, take this smart pill, do this or that. Know who's behind it and know. Uh, they think now that they don't need God, that they have found 
eternal life. Today we have the technology to hack humans, beings on a massive scale, he said. Everything is being digitalized, everything is being monitored. And how many know? Everything is being digitalized and everything is being monitored. They want to take everything and uh, it's, it's, it's really a dark future for what they have planned for humans. But God. I always say, but God. And then this is another thing. Do you have just a couple more minutes? It said, in this time of crisis, you have to follow science, he says. It's often said you should never allow a good crisis to go to waste. Because a, what we just been through, crisis, is an opportunity to also do good reforms that in normal times people would never agree to. But in a crisis, you will see we have no choice. We have no chance, sorry. But in a crisis, you will see we have no chance. So let's do it. And he says, the future humanity, get this, will look back in a hundred years from now, if man is still alive, if women can survive. <laughs> they said they were going to identify this last pandemic as the moment when a new regime of surveillance took over, especially surveillance under the skin. They are using these times to implement what they really want to do. And that's why you need to be warning people. You need to be aware of what's going on. This is the temple. You have a temple of the Holy Spirit. Be careful what you put in it, right? And you want to know who is this uh, World Economic For Forum? It's officially partnered, partnered with BlackRock. You know about BlackRock? They own everything. Uh, Vanguard, BlackRock, and Street something or other. Uh, which possess ownership of virtually every major company in the world to the tune of over $10 trillion in assets. So is this a little thing? It's not a little thing. Love not the world. Verse 15, let's read it again. Neither the things that are in the world. If a man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh... The lust of the eyes, the pride of life, they think they finally conquered what God created. <laughs> but guess what? Mm -hmm. They don't know that they've already lost. Yeah. <laughs> they've already lost. You, there is a hell. Yeah. There is a heaven and there's a hell. They think they can take that away. They think they can take away the free will that God put in man. Mm -hmm. They want to replace everything that God has made. They wanted to reverse God's order and everything. Listen to that before maybe some of you haven't listened. Listen to that one about how they want to reverse God's order and everything. Because why? It's the enemy. He's the enemy of God and he wants to destroy what God created. But God is greater. God wins. The lust of the flesh, the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. But be informed. So many Christians, they don't want to be informed. They don't, know, they don't want to know what's going on. They're just kind of like, oh, God's going to take care of me. Uh, but he wants us to do what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to you know, work while, we, while it is day. We're supposed to study to show ourselves approved. We're supposed to do some things, not just listen to what our so-called leader in the church said. What if he's being controlled and manipulated by somebody and he's really not even saved? I, I doubt now if a lot of these mega people are even Christian. They wouldn't be teaching what they are and pushing false doctrines on God's people if they were truly saved. It's better to have a little nothing ministry than a huge ministry that's going to face God's judgment. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. We want to do the will of God because in this world it might not, I mean, I think it's going to get less and less where Christianity is going to be you know, persecution is coming. We know that. But we're doing the will of God. And I know by us doing these YouTubes, we're doing the will of God to get the truth out there for those that want to hear it. Amen? Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists. This is a spirit of Antichrist. It's against Christ. It's against the Bible, saying the Bible is false and fake news. Can you imagine saying that it's fake news? The Bible is fake. So guess what? If, if all the world leaders are behind this guy and he's saying the Bible is fake news, guess what? 
you're going to be persecuted for saying that it's the truth. They're going to call it misinformation and false news. So be aware. But we have the strength of the Lord. We, you know, we, we can do all things through Christ who strengthen, strengthens us. We're not to lean on our understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him. Live and walk with the Lord every single day. Get off the fence if you're backslidden. Get with it. Get back, get back to the Lord. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is a Christ? He is antichrist and denieth the Father and the Son. Father, we thank you. These are, are dark times, but because you are light, you show us the way. You show us the path. You give us enough light for the next step. And that's all we need is the next step, the next day. And we thank you, Father, for being that light. We thank you, Lord, for helping us spread these truths to your people. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, share. I want to ask you all to share these, share some of these videos while you still can. Uh, usually after 48 hours, my YouTubes go on to a dead whatever. Uh, that's called uh, shadow banning. I've been shadow banned for years. Um, that means it just doesn't come up in people's feeds like it used to. So if you share and like it, it helps it, the videos to be seen. And right now, that's what we need to do. We need to like and share things so they can be seen rather than all this other junk that's going around and what they push and what they want to be popular. We still need to get the truth out there. The Bible says we got to preach the world, uh, preach the word, preach the word, and then the end shall come. So we need to preach the world, be aware. <laughs> I can't even talk. Preach the word and be aware there are antichrists, always have been, and they're building, but we aren't to fear because we have the true Christ. Amen? If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison, and also her backup channel, Roberta Morrison 2. Hit the bell button to be notified of new messages from her. Be sure to check out her YouTube playlist for other messages that interest you. Go to the livinginhispresence.org webpage and click on the top center to go see her messages. There are free audio downloads of the messages available also. We are viewer supported. On the main webpage at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time. <music>